So I've got my coffee. I'm starting my day as the sales order processor. And right away in my role center, I can clearly see this big red delineation. And that's there for a reason. It's trying to get my focus that I have too many open sales orders. So here you can see this one's green and this one's red. And that was by configuration. So what we can do is we can set up these queues, but we can make the variables to our liking. We can make it favorable if it's green and there's a certain number that's okay, or we can make it unfavorable at a certain number. And again, this is configurable by your administrator or by your users. And the whole goal is to show them exactly what they need to do to fulfill their job. So we try to make the role center very clean. Let me go ahead and jump into this tile. And as you can see, it's just a pre-configured list of sales orders. So here, I'm in my sales order screen. Here it's telling me I've got a custom filtered list. So here I can see various lists, again, that are pre-configured. But I'm gonna go ahead and open up this pane. And I'm just gonna take off one of these variables so I can see a few more of my sales orders. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that here. Here we have our typical linear look at our sales order, sales order numbers, items across the screen. There'll be some interesting things that I'll show you about sales order types and such. Here, if I go to the top, of course, I could filter, I could sort, I could take columns out if I like to. But here, I really wanna look because I have a lot of open sales orders that seem to be stuck. So I do wanna see what's going on with those today. So here on the right, I'm gonna click right here and this is gonna open a nice little window. And these are called our fact boxes. So these are configurable. We've put some very important items that we believe we need to process these orders. But again, we can add or remove those as needed. So one thing to note, I've got my line view here. I've got my fact box. So if I didn't wanna go into these records, I could actually scroll through these. And as you might see, the information is going to change on the right depending on the record that I'm in. So this would allow me a quick view of that data with actually not having to go into that record. So in this particular case, it looks like we've got an issue in our order review process. Well, what is that? Well, within our industry, there is a lot of oversight, a lot of compliance. So instead of having one person manually check these orders, we build in these business rules into the system so that the system can make sure that our compliance is in order, our pricing is in order, so that we don't have delays or issue. So it's really helping streamline that process. Looks like I do wanna go into this particular order. So I'm gonna bring up the sales order form. And as you can see here, I'm in my sales order form. I've got my particular sales order company. And you're gonna see there's just general ERP fields here within the system that I can utilize, things like due date, ship date, but there's also very specific fields that we created. Business Central out of the box does not support multiple order types, but within the wine and spirits distribution trade industry, there's all kinds of order types, and they all have different business rules or possibly could have different business rules. For instance, if I had a regular sales order, I probably want to make sure that we're charging them appropriately. I don't want to have an item with zero cost. But conversely, if I am doing a sample order for a customer, I do want that cost to come in as zero. So my business rule for this one could be to ensure sales price is not zero. But in this case, with the sample order, the business rule might be ensure that the unit cost is zero. So because we've added this order type code, you can have multiple business rules for those different order types. So we've got our open status, the review status is pending. We talked a little bit about what that is, but let's dive into that. So here I can see first and foremost, my customer is over their credit limit. Now, instead of going out and going to look at their customer card separately, we actually put a nice little feed here so that we can see the customer details, wines of New Zealand, and yes, I can clearly see that their credit limit is quite low and they're over their credit limit. So I can go ahead and address that within the system. Also, I have another issue here. They actually have an inactive SLA. 
Well, if you're in the business, you know that SLA means State Liquor Authority, and you need to be in compliance with them or it's gonna cause you quite a bit of headache. So here, I can actually see my State Liquor Authority license. I've got the license code here, but if I look at my license status code, I can see that the license is not found. So I'll need to go ahead and address that. And as I can see, if I go to the right here, I'm seeing what the error message is. They're not finding that particular license. So I can go ahead and address that. Also, I've got one other issue with this particular item. It has non-reserve quantity. We do have the ability for allocations in the system. Unfortunately, wine is not unlimited. Every year, every vintage, there is a limited selection of those items. So I need to be cognizant of what are my allocation rules? What are my depletion policies? So I can set those up globally. I can set them up by state, by item, by customer, by sales rep. We tried to give you many variables to set those up. If I wanted to, I could just go ahead and approve these very quickly. In this case, I'm good with all three of them. Let's go ahead and select those. Let's approve that and get that one out the door. And as you can see, that's now come off my sales order and I've got some others here that I can deal with.